Welcome to Digital Asset News Clips. We take the advancements in crypto and digital assets and break them down to bite-sized pieces. So today, I want to talk to you about a project I think is going to be pretty big as far as play to earn and what's going to happen because they've already got a working product in the regular world as far as gaming. So before we get going, I just want to make mention of a couple of things. And this is um, what I consider our job as investors. And the big thing is that this is from my friend uh, Sheehan Chandrasekara. He's a crypto CPA. And he said, and he put it beautifully. He says, look, this is the first time crypto buyer doing deal due diligence on the next 100x coin recommended by a YouTuber. That's me. So when you were, were talking all these things, you have to understand this is investment opinion, not investment advice. So it's up to you to do your own research. But I got to tell you, this one looks pretty darn big. And our job as investors to really expand on that, that topic is to look at what people are into and where the ball, <laughs> metaphorically speaking, is moving. I'm an American, okay? So for these, these top 10 uh, most watch sports in the world today, these have no relevance to me whatsoever. But this is the same thing as like being a, someone who is in a sports and someone who's being an investor. Look to where everything's going and what is the most popular and things that are doing as far as options. So if you didn't know, uh, first of all, soccer is the biggest sport in the world. I could care less. I'm an American. Again, total fans, half of the planet are 3.5 billion. Number two, cricket. Again, ugh, no interest in that whatsoever. Two and a half billion people. Then comes basketball, then comes hockey, and then comes tennis with a billion people. So when I think about that, I also think about gaming. So again, in America, gaming, you would think is, you know, somewhat big, right? But this is from Statista, and we can see that in North America in millions, it's only 284 million people as far as gamers. Now, uh, our country itself, the United States, is around 340, 360 million people, give or take. Uh, but globally, we're looking at almost 7 billion people. And in Asia, you've got almost 1.5 billion people playing games. So why is this so important? It's important because you have to get context into what we're talking about. The game that I'm going to be talking about, I really would not be playing this game. However, that's not my responsibility as an investor. My responsibility as an investor is to take a look at what are some really promising projects and what could be the next big thing. And this is one of those where I think, hey, this could be pretty big. So this is an article. Uh, this is from Fa Fast Forecast, Japan's Elemental Knights online game to release play to earn metaverse vision. And I will just say this before I go on. To me, it only makes sense if you have a game that has a ton of players and they're playing it for free, I'm sure they love that part. But what if you told those exact same players, look, you like playing for free? Well, how about if we pay you to play and you can make a living off it? That, my friends, I think is the big thing. So this article sums it up real quick. Japan's mobile game Elemental Knights Online, that is a game right now, Elemental Knights, is planning to release Genso Kishi. I hope I said that right. Online Meta World. It's a play to earn, free to play, user generated NFTs, non fungible tokens in the metaverse. Again, so Kishi Online's Meta World Metaverse allow players to purchase land. The land, as well as in game equipment, can be minted as NFTs. And there's two different types of tokens uh, the multiverse token and the R-O-N-D. Multiverse token is essentially going to be the governance token, utility token. R-O-N-D is the currency in game. And of course, the last sentence here MV token or multiverse token. Uh, we'll be on Uniswap, QuickSwap, and CamCakeSwap by this month. And that's why it's so important we're talking about this today. So that is the very first part about what is going on. So what I want to do now is talk about Elemental Knights to the Gensokishi uh, game itself. So when we take a look at the game, this is the actual uh, website where you can find the actual game and download and play and have great times, fun times, all that stuff. When I scroll down, what I notice about this game, first of all, is this. You can download the App Store, Google Play, Nintendo Switch, and PS4. So when I think about the products that are coming out right now, think of it this way. It doesn't matter how great the restaurant is that opens up down the corner if it doesn't have a bunch of built-in people to bring to it. It's very hard to do the marketing, to uh, create that ecosphere, to create that network, <laughs> Jerry, uh, to get those people in there because it's a process. However, what if you already had a celebrity chef 
right? A celebrity chef who's known like Dave Ramsey or, you know, not Dave Ramsey, the Ramsey, the, the, uh, the, the, the chef on TV. And he brings people all the way in and goes, look, I'm going to bring, or Guy Fieri, I'm going to bring, I'm going to open up this, this restaurant in your hometown. There will be people at the door coming into it because he already has an established base. That is the same thing, which is what's going on here with this game and into Insukishi. So when I see this, I'm like, okay, it's already got uh, app, Google Play, Switch, and PS4. So when I take a look at uh, the iOS store, well, here it is, looks pretty good. And it's got uh, it's got uh, 4.3 out of five, pretty good reviews. When I take a look at the Android store itself, well, there it is right there. And uh, I can scroll down, I can see, that's what's great about Android. It tells you, hey, installs, they got a million plus installs. And you've also got in-app products selling at between 99 cents and 48.75, again, free to play but they're not doing play to earn yet until they transfer over and then if we take a look at the nintendo site well there it is right there you can get it for the nintendo switch so again this already has built-in users already porting over and that's why i think this is going to be pretty darn big so now let's take a look at uh the actual we saw on the platforms we saw the downloads let's, let's take a look at the social aspect as to and so kishi what's going on so if i take a look at their Twitter account, for example, they have Twitter and Line and uh, Discord. So with Twitter, uh, just so you know, this one just started in December and it already has, or sorry, joined November, end of November. It's already got 20,000 followers. Uh, I've been doing this for two years and I've got around 100,000 followers. So congratulations for Kenzo Kishi Online for uh, beating me to the punch and getting a ton of different followers just because they've already got built-in people. Then we take a look at the Discord group. Again, just started. Uh, today is the 13th. At the 13th or the 14th? 13th, 14th, excuse me, 14th of December. So in two weeks, they've accomplished a massive amount, which would take a lot of people a lot of time. So again, looking pretty good as far as what is going on. And then now this right here, this essentially is, we're going from uh, the game itself uh, which is uh, Elemental Knights, excuse me, from here. Now we're transferring over into Gensukishi into the metaverse and their play to earn game. What I want you to notice real quick here is that, uh, as you can see, there's this thing called total amount of $10,000 private sale whitelist spots. This is why I'm bringing this to you so fast because, and I, tr and I did a good amount of research. I think uh, you'll appreciate it. And that, again, do your own research. But if we click on this for the private sale, just so you know, this is how it works. Uh, you can participate in the whitelist campaign for a chance to participate in a private sale worth $10,000. If you can't get into this, don't worry because we're very, very, very early. And I'll talk about that in a second. So in this campaign, there, campaign, there are various challenges. You can earn points for each challenge you complete. The more points you have, the more chance you have to win. And 100 winners, only 100 winners, will be selected in a drawing for a $100 multiverse token. Here's how to do it. You click on here. I'm gonna ask you for your full name and address. You put those in and then off you go. And then about the campaign period, it's between December 7th to December 19th. So again, today is the 14th, you got five days. On December 20th, we'll send a notification to the campaign winner's email address and an invitation to the private sale. It's kind of like winning the Willy Wonka golden ticket, if you want to take a look at it that way. Please make sure that you can receive emails from info at ginso.game. So make sure that you whitelist it. And here's the community itself. So again, uh, who can participate this in this? You can take a look at uh, everything that is going on as far as the, the legal ramifications, but uh, I will leave that up to your due diligence as to who can participate. So when we take a look at this, we go over here and we really want to break things down by looking at the white paper. And there's two different flavors of the white paper. There's the white paper light, which just gives you like the basics, which is good for the normal people, right? That's fine. But us, we're a little different. We're going to have to delve down a little deeper and we'll take a look at the full white paper and take a look at the tokenomics and the roadmap and everything else. So it's very important we do these two things. As, as investors, that's what we're supposed to do. And we do not want to be like what my uh, friend Sheehan says, just doing our lame, weak due diligence. We must dive deep. So when we take a look at uh, the actual light paper, here is what we have. So... Uh, I'll go through this quickly because it's uh, it's very it's very nice, uh, very well put together. Uh, but I think we all know what this is. So, so it's a metaverse play. It's online, a game of Web 3.0 and metaverse. So, what is uh, Genzo Kishi Online? It's the Chinese version of the 3D 
a uh, massive multiplaying online role-playing game, Elemental Knights. And Elemental Knights had a nice little Game Star Award of Taiwan 2012, the best-selling smartphone game of 2012. So again, it's like a decade ago, but they're still going strong. So I like to invest and do, first of all, good teams and products that have longevity. I think this is doing pretty good. But again, they're porting over that game into the metaverse. And I think, it again, it comes with uh, certain advantages uh, as far as bringing people over and disadvantages, you can you can make an argument for that. So again, it's been running for 13 years. Here's the history, 2008, on a feature phone <laughs> before they even called the smartphones. And now we're on the Switch and PS4. So that's pretty uh, pretty amazing. This was interesting to me, the demographics. So you have gender again, gamers, uh, Asia. I'm not really too familiar with them. I just look at the stats. For the gender, you've got male and female almost a 50 50 split which is pretty darn good you got about 20 about 25 days and 25 000 players per month and that's i don't know which ones are talking about they're talking about all four or certain uh certain different platforms but in-game message opens Eighty thousand messages get opened per day so imagine this you're playing your game on your ps4 your switch or your ios or your android device and you're opening up messages well, it'd be very easy for them to send you a message and go, just so you know, if you like playing free-to-play free to, free to play games, we got a play-to-earn game. It's on. It's in the metaverse. You might have heard about that. Pretty sure you have. So maybe you might want to check this out. And official Twitter followers, 16,000. It's already 20,000, so good for them. And then, uh, again, I'm not I'm not bitter because they're they're ahead of me. They just did a great, better job. All right, so then moving down, this is all the different gameplay. Pretty cool. And then special equipment NFT sale starts before the official launch. So you can get into the NFTs and uh, the different uh, categories, which is great. But this is the big thing. I need you to, to really pay attention to this particular part, which is the blockchain platform will use Polygon and Matic. I would not be as excited if they were using just the base Ethereum because the gas fees are outrageous. However, with a side chain, layer two solution, or you want to call it with Polygon, they're going to crush it because the fees are so low. And that's what allows for actual gamers and play to earn to actually make this actually work. So that is exciting. Acquisition of character creation rights for Metaverse. We'll get into all that stuff. Here's the Metaverse roadmap at a glance. And I'll break this down better when we go to the full one. So they're going to build the ecosystem of blockchain transfer the rights of the virtual to NFT step-by-step, step, and they're going to move centralized management to dApps because you have to understand that the operation platform at first will be PC, Android, iOS. That is not a dApp, but they will be transferring over, so they want to get everything going. This is, I, again, I cannot stress this enough. We are getting into the ground floor of the ground floor of the ground floor. This is super early, but if you have to take a look at where things have been to look where things are going, Take a look at the team, take a look at the tokenomics. We'll go over all that stuff in a bit. So uh, cryptocurrency exchanges, uh, Uniswap, QuickSwap, SushiSwap, Curve Finance, Trustpad, Chainboost. They're not even listed yet. Not even there yet. Token and utility. So there's the two different tokens. First, you've got the MV chain, the multiverse uh, coin, excuse me. It's mainly used outside of the game for building a metaverse world. Again, built on Polygon. The total number of issues, 2 billion. Not a ton but not like 21 million like Bitcoin. But again, if you're gonna get, if you wanna put in a you know, couple million people to play this game, you're gonna need a lot of different uh, uh, coins. And that's just the governance token. So you get voting rights on the right here for the rule policy of the game. You can also stake it. You can stake multiverse for earning ROND, R-O-N-D coin, and that's the in-game currency. And you can have transactions fees for in-game trading. Now here's where we get to uh, the actual partners. And this is again, invest in people. Maxi Kwan, CEO, blockchain mentor of IAPS Accelerator. So he's been around the block. He knows a lot about blockchain. Ricky Chen is an advisor, founder of Tomo Touch, former blockchain business, Avagachi ambassador. We just did a video on Avagachi. Also, you can check that out. I'll put that link in the description. Kevin Hu, our whole advisor, co-founder and CEO of Blockcast.it. So again, blockchain companies. And this one, I'll, I'll go to Tukuhiko. Uwabo, I nailed it, advisor, former fantasy stars creator of Sega Company Limited. Not too shabby. Then you've got uh, Masaki Kato, advisor, president CEO of Clappers Company Limited. I took a look at that, and that's for uh, animation and music into gaming. So this guy's also been really heavy into gaming. But this one right here is the most 
I, no disrespect. No, it's the most interesting and the most boring person. And I'm going to tell you why it's the most boring, because no one cares about legal until you get sued. And it's important that you have the legal person wrapped up, uh, a professional, so you know exactly where you're going to go. And this is a great play. So this is, I wouldn't say this wrong, Guncho Sai, a legal advisor, international lawyer, familiar with virtual currency, experienced legal advice to Coinbase. So if you're looking for the right person, to launch a metaverse play, you nailed it. So good job. And then we have, and then to get into the, the, the thick of it, the team and partner. So Cointelegraph Japan broadcast it, uh, AB Media and Polygon. Why, and again, Polygon, when I see this, I'm like, are they just building on it and they're saying it's a partner and not really, really going do, doing too much of it? No. So this just broke before I did the video. This is from this is from their Twitter account. And this is actually also put out by Polygon Studios. We have officially announced the collaboration with Polygon Studios and will be supported by them on the GameFi category. With Polygon's help, every night will be more powerful and faster and cheaper. Uh, so this you can actually I actually retweet this myself. The question I had in my mind was: Is Polygon Studios directly in collaboration with? Polygon. Well, here's the press conference. Polygon Studio will offer $100 million to fund gaming NFT projects. Polygon, a maker of a crypto-based platform for NFTs, has set up a $100 million fund for projects aimed at combining the hot blockchain tech with gaming. Sounds exactly what's going on here. To cater to game companies, Polygon is setting up Polygon Studios to focus on gaming projects so that developers can fuse their Web 2.0 games, Web 2.0 games, which is this into web 3.0 decentralized tech which of course is this so when we talk about is polygon a part of it they are very much a part of it and it wouldn't be surprising if they start to do even more investing so that's what we have as far as uh, that little piece right there and then uh ba -ba 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 -ba, that takes care of that piece and there's one thing i want to make mention which is pretty important which is the roadmap and that this document here uh, that we let's see where the roadmap here it just doesn't do it justice. So you can see how you know it's it's nice official website uh, December first official Twitter December first. Uh, you've got uh, the multiverse token list on Uniswap not until December twenty third. The first equipment FT on January. Multiverse listed on SushiSwap in January, February. Official launch is in August 2022. So you're looking at Q3. The first six, yeah, Q3. Had to do some quick math. Uh, and then the first land NFT auction, October 2022, Q4. So that's great and all. <laughs> that's uh, that, that's good to see. So if I if you wanted to really break it down into a visual representation, here's where you are at right now. Watching this video, you are here. You are at the the ground floor of the ground floor. And I cannot stress this enough. This is where you are at. We haven't even gotten to a token listing. There's the white list. You can hopefully get into that. There's only 100 people. But this, I think, could be a very big thing. And uh, that is essentially the hype part of what I was just talking about. Now, again, you can leave it right here and be like, great, sounds good. I'm going to go do my thing. Or if you want to stick with me a little bit longer, I'm going to explain to you why this is going to be a pretty big project in my personal opinion. And that's why we're going to go down a little bit of a rabbit hole and do the full white paper. So if you want to stick with me, go right ahead. So here's what we got. So as far as the full white paper, there's some interesting things. And these are the things I've been talking about for months now about job creation, where things are going as far as like with the metaverse and why it's going to be so big. And it's going to all laid out in this game. So let me scroll down. There's a lot of stuff that is overlap that you can see right here. So I'm not going to go over that because I don't want to double up and uh, we've already talked about it. But this one right here, again, blockchain specs, multiverse token, Polygon, the ROND token, Polygon, NFT, Polygon, the wallet is going to be MetaMask. We'll talk about it in a second. NFT market, OpenSea, virtual currency exchange like we just talked about. How to start the game. This was the most interesting to me because all this stuff is great, but if you don't have people who understand how to do it, it's worthless. So the, about the necessity of MetaMask, this game can be played even by beginner users of virtual currency. You can earn R-O-N-D, round, round, the in-game virtual currency through normal play and play without registering a MetaMask wallet. 
MetaMask is only required to be linked to NFT, virtual currency, multiverse token, and RON token for import and export. At this time, the virtual currency beginners, we're going to have an explainer called what is MetaMask and add an explanation so that the user can understand the overview of virtual currency. So think about that. They're like, we know they're gonna to need to know this, so we're gonna actually put an explainer in there of how to do things, and not something, hopefully some, not some lame explainer, but something like video and walks them through the process. Hey, if you guys need a video, I got a video for you. But that is a great forward thinking thing to do. So that's not bad. And then uh, scrolling down, MV token, you got two billion. Uh, the most important token of the game, MV stands for Metaverse, thank you. The utility, function to buy fashionable equipment. You can power up by various uh, paid items. And this one, can't really see too well. I need to blow this up. Voting rights allow you to decide the policy of the game and function to stake MV. I think we talked about that, sorry. The right to create and offer fashionable equipment, the right to purchase rights to create lands and monsters and non-playable uh, whatever at a discount. Fees used for in-game trading, great come on down, you can take a look at, and this breaks it all down to what you can actually buy it with. And then MV staking, this is interesting because if you're gonna stake this, you're gonna know this. There's no recurring deposit period. When you stake uh, the multiverse uh, token, you'll receive ROND according to the amount you deposited. There are also some utility features of MV token that cannot be activated without staking. So if you're looking as far as like the replayability, the gamification, that's it right there. So that's pretty good. There's also some, uh, oh, sorry. And then about the function of fashionable equipment. One of the most important NFTs in this game is called fashionable equipment, which I think to me, it, it sounds like fashion, but it, but they think that is, uh, is everything. So uh, fashionable equipment, you can change the appearance of your character, affect the increase the strength of the character. You can use buffs, parameter en enhancement and attack skills with powerful effects. So that's just the gameplay. Again, I'm not a big gamer, so this just is gamification for people who do. And then just like Axie Infinity, they've also got a scholarship program. And I think, again, this is job creation. What I was talking about as far as like people will be in the metaverse because of the fact that you can also play to earn, but you also make a, a living wage. So fashionable equipment can be rented to other players. So if you get in early, probably a good idea to start renting things out. Rentals can be made to any number of people as long as you have fashionable equipment. Players who cannot afford to buy them can borrow them from other players and play with them. The player who rents the fashionable equipment, must pay the lenders, and the owner, like this, the owner can earn a good amount of money by renting out the equipment to users without having to pay it themselves, to play it themselves. The play, so again, you don't have to be a player, just rent things out, right? When people were going through the gold rush, maybe you didn't want to be a spec uh, a speculator and go, hey, I'm going to be out there digging for gold. Here's some pickaxes, here's some pans, get to work, and then I'll sell them to you. That's what is great about this. The player who bars the equipment can play with a stronger character for a fee paid to the owner. So, you know, sure, by playing with a stronger character, you're able to earn more money in the game. The rented fashionable items can be collected when the owner wants to collect them. The renter cannot return the item for the minimum rental period. So that's like that's like a prepayment penalty uh, as far as if you're you know familiar with like uh, paying off mortgages and stuff like that. Okay, so going down, 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 down. Max map specifications. This is the play I'm going to get into. I'm big into uh, purchasing land, purchasing uh, real estate, mostly for short-term rentals. Me and my wife have a lot of different properties for Airbnb and VRBO. So I look at land. Now I look at land physically as a great uh, hard asset, but more so in the digital world. So lands will be sold in auction format. You can find some information. Only users who have been staking the multiverse token for a certain period of time will be entitled to participate in this auction. So if you want to get into this, the land, which I do, I'm going to have to buy the token. So if you're looking for lockups and things like that, this is where it really comes down to. Okay, so let's see. Winning bidders can create maps and monsters with mods. User, users who have earned the right to land will be connected to the VIP hotline with the management, open a telegram to communicate directly, provision of development environment for land. And the landowner can also hire an agent to do the development. So again, 
job creation. When I think about this, I'm like, I'm not going to do this. I'm going to hire somebody else to do this for me. I can guarantee that's what's going to happen. And that's just in their job. And then, of course, when people want a scholarship, like, hey, I want to play. Great. You guys play. Have fun. Just give me 15% and you get the 85% or however, however it works out. Again, I don't see how this, uh, this looks like a pretty good deal. All right. So let's keep going and finish this up. Not too much more. Uh, land, a plot of land. What I thought was interesting here was, as far as the plot of land, the map does not have to be square like you would see in like a sandbox or like an essential land. It's not just little squares. It can be whatever you want it to be, however you want to want to shape it out and however you want to buy it. So plots of land. And then uh, about, this is good, about the income you can earn by land. When other players play on a land, the landowner receives an incentive. Other players pay an entrance fee round, which is why there's uh, so much of it, when they enter the map. The entrance fee is divided 85% to land ownership and 15% to the manager as a management fee. So just so you know, there is one trillion of the token. Again, this is just the in-game currency. When you have, when you are trying to go for millions of people, you're probably gonna need a lot of money. Look at America. We like to print uh, money like it's going out of style. <laughs> Ron is the game's base currency. And let's see. And how to obtain it? How to obtain uh, Rond? Usually able to obtain Ron in two different ways. Purchase at a DEX or earn Ron by selling in-game items to weapon shops and tool shops. Here's how you use it. Purchase in-game items. Use when you want to warp between maps to shorten the time. That's why people are going to use a lot of it. Use for entrance fees uh, when event participation. Use for entrance fee when playing the map. Use for challenge fees to accept quests. Again, everything you want to do is there. And then just so you know, they will be burning the Ron token, but they haven't made it. Uh, haven't made a definitive number. It says it will be burned when it reaches a certain number. What I've already talked to them. They're still trying to uh, get exactly what that is. So playing this game will be balanced that you can earn money, enough money per month on average to make a living from play to earn alone. That's their goal. I like that goal. All right. And then uh, trade. Trade is possible. You can trade whatever you want to. Moving down. And then this is the last part. These are the last two parts. Tokenomics. Now I know that uh, this isn't, some people skim over this. This is the most, one of the most important parts besides the team. You have to understand that if you have a massive amount of tokens that are being given to venture capitalists, like on some projects, they'll give venture capitalists and, uh, and, and different uh, pre-sales 80% of the tokens that are coming out. What does that mean? Well, when everything goes live and then you have all these different people come in, they just dump on you. They dump on all the people. So when I look at projects, I'm making sure that it's a good distribution of those tokens so I don't get dumped on and you don't get dumped on. Because just so you know, I'll be buying a lot of this. And I'm biased in what I talk about. I only talk about things I, I get into because there's, to me, I think it's just skin in the game. So this is how it's all broken down. So the allocation type. We want to look at the big ones, right? So the dark blue, 28%, that's the ecosystem fund. That's uh, provide liquidity for trading and selling. I'm okay with it. That's cool. Great. And then marketing, 12%. You got to pay for marketing. Unfortunately, those uh, restaurants, like we talked about in the beginning, they're not going to fill themselves. 27% is liquidity and listing. Great. That's a big chunk. I'm okay with that. 5% is the private sale. Just 5%. I've seen other projects where it's like 25, 35, 50% of private sale. That is no good. And then 6% is advisors and collaborators. And then 22% is management team assignments. And I had to ask them specifically what this means. So they said, they told me that the people that create this game will still need to pay them in tokens as things go on for upkeep. So this is where that will actually come from. So I'm like, okay, 22%, not too bad. So there's the breakdown of the tokens, just like we talked about, equals 100%. This is another thing you got to make, make sure you know about, lockups, because if they just start dumping, it does us no good. So real quick, the private sale, the lockup terms is 24 months, not too bad. And I was like, great, in two years, they get to sell, not so fast. It's released in nine installments every quarter. So that 5%, it's going to get released uh, over 20, over two years but it's every nine months. And I was like, well, that, at first I was like, well, that's kind of a bummer because, you know, like in two years and they can, you know, they can dump on you. But I really thought about it. I'm like, you know, in all honesty, wouldn't it be better just to like, you can actually like squeeze out a little bit if you want to take some profits. Although I, in the first three months, why would you want to take profits on this right away? Right. I think this is going to be a pretty big game. Why would you, I mean, some people will, as long as there's greed in the world, that's how it works. But in my opinion, 
uh, there's there's pros and cons. Let me just think about that in the comments section, but I see this as not uh, too awful of a thing. All right. And then uh, advisors that they get locked up for three years. Management, like we talked about, is over four years, but it's released in 17 installments, again, every quarter. Promotion staff, which was a month, six months and released in three installments. So that is essentially it. More board members and stuff like that. And away we go. So look, I know this is a long video, but uh, again, I need uh, you to understand to do your own due diligence, like we talked about in the very beginning, and why I think this could be a very big uh, game. I've also um, I've also learned some things along the way, and that is that the more marketing uh, you get, the kind of the better it is. But it really comes down; it still comes down to the team, to the games that are good products that have real world utility, and uh, how are the tokenomics. So. That's it for today. So look, if uh, you found some value in today's video, give it a thumbs up. Also consider subscribing. A lot of things we talk about on this channel are things just like this. So uh, that's it for today. Links in the description. Thanks so much. I appreciate it. And I'll see you in the next one.